Hello, welcome again to uh, lesson two on metals. So in the first lesson, we discussed the general methods of extraction of metals. So in this lesson, we are going to look at one of the metals, that is sodium. And as we stated, sodium is among those metals that are extracted by electrolysis. So all the metals that are, uh, we have uh, listed, uh, above those that are above carbon the reactivity series, that is potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, those are not extracted by reduction of carbon, but they are uh, they are extracted by electrolysis. Reason being, they are above carbon the reactivity series. So all reactive metals or all metals above carbon the reactivity series are extracted by this. So sodium being above carbon in the reactivity series. Carbon cannot reduce it. So that is why we use electrolysis in the extraction of sodium as well as also aluminium. Now, this is the setup for the extraction of sodium. So the chief of from which sodium is extracted is rock salt, that is sodium chloride. But this does not mean that this is the only ore of sodium. Sodium also occurs uh, dissolved um, in uh, seawater salty water, uh, sodium also in form of sodium chloride, it also found as a double salt, <coughs> trona, which has uh, the formula, um, is two water of crystallization, and then it is also found, but this one is only in one place, is found as saltpeter, which is basically sodium nitrate, and it is found in a country called Chile. So these are the other uh, oils of sodium. So in Chile, they extract sodium on large scale using this because they, they are a lot of deposits of uh, sodium nitrate or called sodium uh, saltpeter. But in most places or most of the countries, extraction is done uh, from the rock salt. In Kenya, we have um, in Lake Magadi, deposits, large deposits along the Lake Valley, large deposits of Trona, of which can also be used. But on large scale, rock salt is what is used. It is found deposited in most of the rocks. That is why it is referred to as rock salt, as the chemical name is sodium chloride. So the method of extraction, as I've said, it is by electrolysis. Then it is done in a down cell. So this is also called down process. So you can say that sodium is extracted by down process, which is electrolysis of molten. And let me also point out why molten, not solution. Molten because when you melt this, uh, you will only have sodium ions and chloride ions. But if you use sodium chloride solution, because as I've said, this salt can be found and dissolved in seawater. Now, if you use sodium chloride solution, and then you want to extract sodium, it is going to be difficult for you to get sodium. As we uh, explained in the topic of uh, electro, electrochemistry under electrolysis, the effect of um, or the factors that affect preferential discharge of ions, that was particularly in lesson uh, 10 and lesson 11, and particularly lesson 11. So here, in solution form, you have sodium ions, chloride ions, that is from the source. Then, because of the solution you used water as a solvent, water, the, the, the water will dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So during electrolysis, even if you make this solution very concentrated, so if it is dilute, then hydroxide ions will be discharged. But it, if it will be concentrated, chloride ions will be discharged. But as we saw, concentration has not, will not have an effect between these two because the gap between sodium ion and hydrogen ion is very big. There are so many elements in between. So these elements are not closed in the reactivity series. For this case, hydrogen ions will be discharged on sodium ions. So if you use sodium chloride solution, you will not obtain sodium. Instead, hydrogen ions will be discharged. So here you only collect hydrogen gas, not sodium. That is why 
sodium chloride solution is not used in the extraction of sodium, but we use molten liquid form, not aqueous. So in liquid form you have only this. So sodium ions will be discharged at the, uh, the cathode, chloride ions at the anode. So we use molten, not aqueous sodium uh, chloride. So in this setup here, so you feed your molten sodium chloride from the top mixed with calcium chloride. Why are we mixing sodium chloride with calcium chloride? Calcium chloride is added as an impurity to lower the melting point here. So that sodium chloride melts at, <coughs> excuse me, so that sodium chloride melts at a lower temperature. This reduces the cost of electricity. So this is added as an impurity and this is covered in form one effects of impurities on melting point. Impurities lower melting point but they increase the boiling point. So because they lower, that is applied in the extraction of metals and this is how it is applied. So calcium chloride is added, added as an impurity to lower the melting point of sodium chloride. That reduces the cost of electricity in the melting this which reduces it from about 801 to about 600 degrees Celsius. So the molten mixture when it is poured in down cell. Now the down cell is made up of iron shell. The iron shell is surrounded by heat bricks. The function of the heat bricks is to ensure that high temperatures are maintained within the cell so that this mixture, the molten mixture, does not crystallize out because if it crystallizes in solid form, you cannot electrolyze so, uh, this in solid form because the ions will be fused, they will not uh, be mobile. Once the ions are mobile, the current will not flow, hence electrolysis will not take place. So, to ensure that this mixture remains in molten form, the heat breaks are used on the outside of the shell to maintain high temperatures inside the cell. So during the process, the following takes place. So once the mixture is put in, now you can see in the cell, we have at the center here, we have what we call the steel diaphragm or the ion screen, this one, ion screen. Sometimes it is also referred to in other texts you will find um, the, the uh, sorry the diaphragm so the diaphragm is used or iron screen. The function of this diaphragm or the screen, the function is that it allows, it is semi permeable, allows sodium ions to pass through to come to the cathode, but chloride ions cannot come pass through it. So it is used to separate the chloride and the sodium ions so that they don't recombine. During electrolysis process, as uh, we saw in the previous topic that was electrolysis, the following happens. The cations migrate to the cathode while the anions migrate to the anode. So you will have the reaction at the cathode. So at the cathode, you will have sodium ions they will migrate to the cathode, so when they reach there, so the plus sign means they get lost, so the reverse process takes place. The sodium ions gain electrons and are discharged as sodium atoms, which is liquid form. So we have the cathode here, so the cathode is made of steel, so the ion, the sodium ions come there, they gain electrons, so the sodium liquid formed moves like that. Then it is collected into the separator here. So when you open the tap, then the liquid will come out. And then also, 
uh, at this point, because we used calcium chloride, so at the cathode we are going to have sodium ions as well as calcium ions. So sometimes even calcium is also discharged alone. So you also have calcium ions. Though this is the main reaction, but you you might have also this as a side reaction forming calcium liquid. So you will find that this mixture here, the liquid collected here again is a liquid calcium and then make, uh, sodium mixed with calcium that has been discharged because we added calcium ions here. But it is very easy to separate the two because calcium has higher density and high melting point. So the, the calcium liquid, so this so sodium will float, this one is denser, then it has higher, higher melting point. So because of the higher melting point, it crystallizes out fast. It crystallizes out fast. And also the differences in density, it makes sodium will float on top. So it is easy to fetch, uh, to separate the two. So you can, uh, sodium can be siphoned off from that point. So when the tap, you open the tap, then you have the mix of the two. This one will crystallize out because of the higher melting point and also due to the fact that they have different densities. So sodium floats, sodium floats. So hence can be siphoned. So when it is siphoned off and then uh, it is cast into a uh, cool and then cast into blocks, sodium blocks. And then at the anode, at the anode, the chloride ions migrate to the anode, so the anode is positive uh, terminal, the cathode is the negative terminal. So the positive terminal will attract the negative ions of which you have only chloride ions. So the negative sign means they gain the electron, so the reverse process happens, so they lose so minus electron. And as I explained previously, that just instead of writing minus here, because conventionally we write equations in the form of M plus B to give you C plus D. We don't use the minus sign. So for that reason, instead of saying minus electron, so that minus electron, you take it to this side and then uh, arrow acting as the equal sign when the minus crosses the equal sign becomes plus so it will be plus electron so then the chloride ions after losing the electron they become chloride atoms then the chlorine does not exist as atoms the atoms form combine to form a molecule which is chlorine gas so here you are going to have <coughs> two electrons liberated so two ions in liquid, so they lose two electrons forming chlorine molecule. Then it is important to balance the electrons. So at the cathode, two electrons are liberated. The electrons lost at the anode must be gained at the cathode. So here are two electrons, so this must be two like that. So you have to balance the electrons. So for this case, so this is the equation for the reaction at the anode. So the chlorine then it is formed. So what you see here, these bubbles here, so the chlorine gas formed, then it escapes through the wood here. Now, this chlorine gas should not be allowed into the atmosphere because it is poisonous. And also it will form acid rain and it reacts with the water vapor in the atmosphere. Chlorine has so many uses, so instead of letting it into the atmosphere to pollute the environment, it is collected and then stored in pressurized cylinders where it can be supplied to other industries that require it, for example, manufacture by the chloric acid factory that manufactures detergents for water treatment plants. So chloride has so many uses, so it should be collected and then uh, direct, uh, can be taken to other industries, can, or can be sold to other industries, and also source of income, which will reduce the, extra, the cost of uh, 
uh, reduction because now when you sell the chlorine you can recover some of the cost that was used in the extraction process particularly on the cost of heating on electricity the sodium <coughs> ions migrate as i've said to the cathode where they are the discharged there so basically this will be the main process this is what we call the the dance process so here the important areas to pay attention to or the most examinable areas is to identify the chief of which is that identify which is the anode which is the cathode and the materials which they are made of so the anode is made of graphite why because carbon or the graphite will not react with chlorine it is enough then we are still it will not react with sodium ions and then the heat bricks as i've said they are used to conserve the heat so that or to maintain high temperature so that the electrolyte so this molten mixture this is now the electrolyte so that the electrolyte does not solidify then the equation for the reaction at each of the the electrodes at the anode and at the cathode so once you take note of those then basically this is what we call the down cell now there are other questions like uh, properties reactions of sodium so this ones i will discuss later on i'll be looking at properties of metals we will discuss how they react with the water air acids and their uses so this i will discuss the them later uh, uses of metals generally each metal i'll discuss them uh, towards the end of the lesson for now i'm only concentrate with the steps involved in their extraction so this is how sodium metal is extracted so next in our lesson three we shall discuss extraction of aluminium